welcome, Pan. Thanks for taking time today to show up uh, today for our this program. Yeah. Um, I think I will first like to say thanks for having me uh, and showing up today uh, amidst my schedule is totally fine. I think uh, we need to make time for uh, necessary things in life, I guess. Uh, I don't think our journey as creatives is just designing all the time. I think there's more to it than just designing. I think it's really more about living. Uh, and I guess probably we will have a good chance to talk about that later. So this capsule is about how we got here. Mm. So welcome to this very special episode, the first time, our first guest as well. All right. <laughs> so we'll hop right in. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I read about how Carol invited you to join Kinetic and I'm curious about how that played out because everyone had um, similar yet different roles and how did you guys complement and sort of supplement each other? So, uh, the interesting bit about this is uh, my first job at DDB, uh, which was like a big agency, then uh, then to Beatty Ads, which uh, was also quite a cons considerable size agency. Then come uh, receiving a phone call while I was still happy, happily working at Beatty, and my good friend Carol which also happened to be a close friend when we were in Tamp Tampines Junior College. So uh, she said that back then they already started Kinetic Interactive. So Ki Kinetic Interactive was started in 1999 and it was co-founded by Carol, Sean Lam, Benji Chu and Adrian Tan, four of them. So they were in the so-called dot-com boom period. So they did websites and Sean and Benji are killer art directors, killer. Okay, their work is killer. So, and Carol is one of the best account servicing person I've ever met. Good business thinking, uh, great leader. And uh, it's no surprise that within a very short period of time, within a year, they got noticed, they got a lot of projects. Their work just got famous around the world, winning international awards. And uh, they were, they formed the right thing at the right place at the right time. So, um, but what happened was, while it was a dot-com boom, but amongst uh, budgets spent by clients, it still scraps like a 10% or less. So clients still pretty much spend 90% of the money on traditional media. Mm -hmm. So while Kinetic Interactive have a lot of clients, they also ask for, um, they like how they work. They say, do you have a print arm that does print? or design like um, name cards and whatnot. So Carol saw an opportunity there. So he invited me uh, and Roy Poe, now of uh, Beautiful Design, uh, and her and Adrian Tan to form uh, Kinetic Design Advertising. Mm -hmm. So that was like a uh, year 2000-ish, I received a phone call can't remember the exact date, I, but I remember I was reaching my mom's house gate. I was going home. The call came and we chat and he said, Hey, you want to join? Uh? I want to start this thing. I said, Huh? Oh, really? Uh? i still happy here. I still remember that. I was kind of not far from those things I was saying. I said, I'm quite happy where I was. Uh, then she said, um, Think about it. Uh. Then I said, Okay. I said, Let me think about it because it would be fun, right? Hanging out with friends, doing shit, then doing work, you know? So, yeah, then I, I can't remember how long I, I spent thinking. I, I know I wouldn't spend more than a week thinking. Mm. Then just say, okay, let's do this. So, so, so that's how I co-founded the Print Arm. Mm. And um, of course, uh, time passed. Um, and now, throughout the years, some partners have left, you know, uh, to pursue their other interests, some to pursue other businesses and whatnot. So it just, uh, I think everybody left behind a, a very strong foundation for me to pick up the baton and carry on. Mm -hmm. So so to me, what we are doing now is actually a, an amalgamation of everyone's hard work and the baton was just handed on, on to me. Lah. So mm -hmm. in short, uh, actually my, my pressure is, I got huge pressure because I don't let anyone down. Even though they have left, but you know that it's still their legacy. So. The challenge was to, how do I take, carry on the journey, bring in more of my DNA, but not forgetting the previous DNA. 
and how to make it better and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. How would you describe the way you do things at Kinetic as a family? Um, for us, I think um, Kinetic's culture is... Okay, I think we start from uh, how we work, right? How we function, right? Is I always look at it as a foundation thing first. What is the foundation? The foundation is built on family, love, and trust. That is, to me, beyond skill sets first. So let's say, for instance, of course, day one, let's say I start with zero people in the office. I need to hire people in, right? A lot of people will say, okay, uh, bring in the best talent you can get. Agree. But I don't look at that first. I look at how is this person first. If I feel that this person is not going to be a team player, even the portfolio is like, you know, 11 upon 10, uh, like mm. overperforming type, I will not, I will not, uh, I will not even try. I will not even try. I have no problem if the portfolio, when I look at it, is like, my God, this guy is even better than me. Awesome, just take him. Because some smart, some smart people tell me this before. Mm-hmm. Always hire people better than you. Which is true. But for me, is I okay with hiring people better than me, smarter than me, more hardworking than me. That's, that's great. But I think what's above all this uh, is how are they as a person right, mm-hmm. when crunch time comes? Like, you know, it's easy to celebrate, to be honest. It's easy to celebrate when we win something, we win an account, or we win some awards. It's easy to celebrate because drinking, eating, who don't like, right? But we talk about the projects going through a tough time. Talk about losing accounts. Let's talk about um, clients not happy with the work and whatnot, those bad things. I'm more interested in those things because easy things and happy things are easy right. it's the hard things that are hard right so the culture is built on that first we understand what it needs to be in a family first how do you make your clients trust you that they buy creative work I, I, I have questions like that which to me is a bit similar to this so so I always find right that there is always a sweet spot because I don't think things are either one or not are uh, this yeah. 10 or the other zero, mm. they could be in a sweet spot, right, where it's creative but easily understandable by the client and works for the market. And I'm only searching for that. I'm not searching for being creative because that is not good enough. Because we are, then we are only singing to ourselves. Huh? So, mm. I mean, yes, uh, if let's say I'm a singer and I'm a songwriter and I, I believe that should be the method I should be doing. I should sing for myself and people who like my songs listen to me and then they follow the singer. But sadly, as a designer, that is not the lifestyle. That is not the, that's not the mission. The mission is to think creatively that a client can understand and at the same time, your industry peers were like, wow, it's like quite, quite a basic idea but I think it's creative and most masses can understand. And, and that is actually the sweet spot. And I'm just going for that all the time. I know right now you're running Kinetic yourself. So you have to wear that creative hat and then you have to wear the business hat, right? So how do you balance like creative, churning out creative projects and yet making sure that the finance is, the financials are healthy? I, I think I'm very lucky. So now this one we have to backtrack again, right? Back to how I went to Vice Plaza and solicit businesses, then later telling them, sorry, the next project is not $50. Right, as a creative, you'll be thinking, my God, the guy is giving me one more job. It has take no. My answer is no. My answer is, I can do it, but you have tried the goods ready, so now you know it's worth maybe $500. Then let's go for that. So that's how I balance numbers and creative. But of course, at heart, I'm still a creative guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but I understand the numbers enough for me not to be a sucker, lah. not to do things do things where you feel that uh, you're not properly compensated. I use the word compensated some more. Mm. Yeah, so, so like, like for instance, um, throughout the years, you've built quite a decent portfolio. You cannot ask for something much more when you are nothing, right? But you cannot ask for nothing when you are something. Mm. 
you get what I mean? You, you cannot. So that is a thin line. So, so this thin line is actually the hard part. It's not really about the creative or the business head. It's about this thin line, right? About actually what are we worth? Mm. What are we worth? If we are worth this much, is there a reason why we are going lower? Is it because the market sentiments is having a, is bad now? So as a whole industry, everybody is going lower because it's an industry shift. And hence, no choice, we have to, you know, move with times. Then I think that's something we need to consider because uh, I, I always believe we need to be realistic. We can't be dreaming that, oh, in 10 years ago, I was charging X amount. 10 years later, why can't I charge that X amount? I should be charging 2X. Mm. Okay, then that's up to you. If you are so good and you can convince people to pay you 2X, go ahead. But for me, I will move with times, and but I will ask myself logically, are we compensated fairly? And what we are giving to the client, are we giving them good enough product for us to charge that as well? I think me wearing both hats are only half the equation. I need to have a good team mm. that also have these both hats. Mm. Because actually all my creatives in the office understand numbers. That's the nice part. Mm. So every time we sit down, we talk, talk about our project and we talk about the amount of money that we're supposed to spend on this, then we will talk about it and say no. This is not worth it. Let's think of another way to do this. Is there one philosophy that you can share? The, to me, my, okay, my philosophy is quite basic. La. I I put my people before me. Actually, that's all. And and you see, it's easy to say this statement. It's easy. So the only way to prove this statement, right, is the people working in the office. They know. They know that I'm not the usual guy. Because I... You see, understanding where... As employers, right? Let's say, uh, let's say a company is a triangle shape. Lah. As employers, you're right at the top. Lah. Right? Right at the top. You look at the... On top, lah, it's lonely. You know? It's a sharp point. You know? There's only a few people can stand there. At the bottom, lah, is where all the fun is. You know? All the people are there. That's why I never like this triangle shape. I want to make a flat rectangle shape flat as flat as possible but there's a few steps lah. Mm. because to say that everyone is the same is bullshit it can't be right? mm. because I'm the one looking at the numbers right? I can't open up and say hey everybody take a look at the numbers it's flat no right mm. there isn't such a thing so there is a few steps but it's as flat as you can get in any place you can work in at least that's what I'm gunning for mm. so if it's done in that manner I put the people before me then the people will always consider one another. We'll always consider one another. So we don't do like selfish things that like we try not to. Like. So so I implemented a few, I, I'm not sure, maybe a lot of people are doing that as well. When everybody started working home, we started earlier than government circuit breaker. We started two, three weeks earlier because everybody wanted to try how is it like this. Suggested also by my guys. Hey, but I think we better start earlier to see whether Bangkok will pop up. Right? Mm. See? It's a good suggestion, right? Mm. Better start early before to see whether there will be a pop up. Right? Mm. So we started early. Then when everybody started working from home, then I, was, I start that me, I email everybody already. Every month I'll subsidize your electrical fees at home. That's the first thing I did. Because now my office not using power already, right? Mm. Where the electric fee go to that I used to pay. I save money, but I'm not saving money. I'm cheating from my colleagues who's spending money at home, you know. Mm. So that's, you see, that's the first thing you think about first. What is the right thing to do? So I email everybody, I will pay X amount of dollars from your household. Okay, but you on aircon 24-7, uh, I cannot support. Uh. I, wait, I tell them joke, uh, you know. It's a fact. You on aircon 24-7, I cannot power. But I'll be fair enough. I base it on a generic household I'll pay. Mm. Then after that, those who start to work in office, I email everybody. Those who are working in office, I'll pay for your face mask. Mm. Every month, a particular sum of money to buy face mask. Just do that. Simple thing, right? it's, it's not going to cost a lot. Seriously. Then after that, more and more brands started coming up with uh, washable ones. Then I changed that because before that, disposable become a bit more expensive. So I say, okay, every year you're entitled to how many washable ones because some washable one can wash like 10 times. 
10 times equals to how many days. So I divide and I get an average and I top up more. I just say, okay, go and buy your face mask, watch whichever brand, Uniqlo, Muji, whatever. It's a simple solution, nothing. Actually, it's nothing to, it's a very small thing to a company. Mm. But it's, sometimes it's not about how big the budget is. It's the idea, right? Mm. It's the idea of being like, if you really put your guys before you, you've been thinking what, wow, they keep traveling, uh, jala, uh, then face mask keep buying. Need to do something. So I and this is just one example, uh, or a few examples. But these examples cannot happen in one week. These examples need to be felt throughout their whole entire time at Kinetic. One. You have this amazing sort of um, sense of empathy. That there's a very strong innate ability to be able to understand things and to read suddenly beyond the surface. And I think that's quite a powerful uh, trait to have. Which also brings me to another uh, interesting point is, how do you, do you even sleep? Do you sleep, you are operating at side, such a high level for kinetic. Yeah. You run an amazing family project, fanzine, and you have a side band, and you're constantly at the key events. You show up, right, for exhibition, opening. I try to, I try to. Most of the time, I see you. <laughs> and, like, how do you... Like, how do you, yeah, how do you do that? And then, yet, yeah, it's very consistently all highly sort of done, done well. I see. Yeah. Thank you. Um, just to have a bit of uh, accuracy there, I actually not playing in any band for a long time. Uh, I haven't been playing in uh, my side bed and my uh, concave screen for the last 11 to now maybe 12 years already. I haven't been playing for the last 11, 12 years. Uh, I just, I'm a like, bedroom guitar player. So only when I have time, then I go to my, I tell Claire, my concubines <laughs> to, to play with uh, to be To be honest, when different point in my uh, in, in, in my daily life, uh, depending on projects, uh, I won't have enough time for everything all together. It's just that maybe at a, broad, uh, at, a, at a broad glance, it feels that I've done a lot, right? But um, they are all periodic. Lah. So the only thing that really is 365 for me will be kinetics work. Okay, so that's my priority in, in what I do. The first priority is kinetics three. Is my is my commitment three hundred sixty five days a year, so even on weekends, if it's work, it's work, mm. so that will not change. Um, but of course, I'm not saying that uh, I my office come back three six five. No, actually, we are the few agencies that we are trying to have balanced family life. So I don't want my guys to go on weekends. Mm. So sometimes we are invited to for a preach or what, and I look at it. Okay, this one's gonna burn four weekends. I prefer not to take. It means that I go poorer a bit. Lah. But I think you see the, the, the thing about me about family life, uh, back to this again, uh, sorry. Uh, I know it is like going keep going back there. Is you see those people who are single, right? I would like to see them going out with someone. But you can only do that if you have some time of your own, right? If you weekends I see you in the office, uh, you must be dating someone in the office, uh, right? If not, there's no way, uh, right? So, I say no. Then you go and see, you can got time to meet someone. Then those who are already meeting people, is it going to the next stage? Maybe spend more time, maybe you can get married. Uh. Then those who are already married, maybe the next phase is you, if you want to have kids, then maybe have kids. And those who already have kids, then you should spend time with your kids. You shouldn't be spending your weekends in the office, then what happened to your kids? That's to me, where I talked about earlier on, where designing is everything, but it's also not everything. There is a certain balance where we need to strike that we know that we are still human. Back to how I juggle my, my, my time, right, is that I think maybe it accounts for my lifestyle a bit. So I'm quite, let's say just a, a very simple example, I wake up in the morning, uh, Let's say I want to get a cup of coffee, then I want to do certain things. Because I know that the coffee machine takes one minute to start. I will never do my other things, then later I'm going to start my machine. I will start the machine first, 
Then I go and do other things. By the time I make one round, the machine just got heated up and I dispense the coffee. That's actually how I operate. I put all the empty spaces and fill it up with stuff so that it's, it's productive. So I'm, I do everything, even I will start designing a project. I won't design first, I'll think, okay, if I was to go in like that, it would take me three months. That's not the right way to do it. I'll think, I would, I'd rather take one week uh, to think properly, properly how do I execute this than to execute one week earlier. I'll plan first because later you'll save time. And when you save time, you can hone your project. But if you don't have time, you got no time to hone your project, right? You gotta go, the project gotta go already. So uh, every design studio or advertising or hybrid in your case, uh, studio have their own fair share of um, whether we call it shitty project or very uh, challenging uh, incidences. Um, could you share two or three of those and how you overcame them and what did you learn about them? I see. Actually, for us, we consider ourselves quite fortunate. Uh, I mean, running for 21 years. Uh, I mean, for, I mean, Kinetic is 21 years. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on it for 19 years. So, I will say that the, the fortunate thing is we do not have many such examples to share but I do know one thing that probably will lead to um, a bad partnership <clears throat> because I consider our work together with the client a partnership right so I think like any relationship being on the same page is the most critical so like some clients when they hire a, a particular agency a, a design studio I think they need to know what are their strengths like, why do you choose them in the first place? Ah? Because they are good with design, or is it they are good with logo design, or they are good with their advertising communications, or they are good with video production and whatnot. They, first, I think they need to know what the strength of the, the studio they are working with. So if they know what these guys are capable of, when, when we are working together, they are less likely of uh, unfortunate things to happen. So, so just to give, give an example, like I've, I've worked with a client before where sometimes they expect us to be yes men. Our job is not to say no. Okay, they, it can't be the client coming no, no, everything, no, no, it's not that. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to hear and, and and actually for us, I will say that majority of the times we coordinate with the clients and we take in their feedback and we do amendments and, and many times it come out better, you know. Because don't forget the part we talk about authenticity because sometimes the client really do know their brand better than us. So to hear them out is the first thing we need to do. So our job is not to say no, but our job is also not to be a yes man. You come, change this one, change this one, uh, darker, I don't like this typeface, I change this, then... Uh, uh, you know, certain aspects of certain geometry shape that is 100% subjective. Oh, I prefer this, prefer that. And, and, and if you don't go back with the exact changes, they are upset because, you know, you, that you, you didn't follow. But then the thing is, when you hired us, you knew that we were a creative agency. We are not a, a FA studio where our proposition to you was come to us and we will get everything mapped up for you. And whatever you all require, I, you all want this, I just put on the left, put on the right, as per what your, your, your suggestion is, then I feel that I'm not doing my job. Then you're overpaying us for the job. Because it's, it's funny, lah, you know? Mm. So, so to me, I think that is actually the main, main thing that I can really talk about. The rest, uh, I do not really have, really quite lucky that most of the time, whatever we present, because I go in with the mindset, right, that they will understand. I think it's been an amazing sharing. Yeah, you've been so generous uh, about all these. Yeah, so I, I think that I learned so, so much, much. <laughs> and, and I also got to know you a little bit more. <laughs> we, we haven't really sat down before and have a... Yeah, yeah, not, a, not, not, yeah. This, yeah. This, so this is, this is good. This is, uh, I enjoyed it tremendously. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so thank, thank you, you so much. So much time. Yes. Yes. Thanks for showing up again. Thank you, thanks so, for having me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.